Hi, this is Peter Wolf. And I'm Miriam Florio. We're here with Channel, Channel Q. Q. <laughs> We're going to show you the serum mailbag. And focus on the serum spotlight. Hope you enjoy the show. A town like any other, or is it? Business is booming on the streets of middle America, but some of that business ain't quite on the level. Join us today as we meet Angels with Filthy CRM. Did you get the data, Toots? I'm about to get a lot more than data once my company finds out I exported these documents. A one-way ticket to the big house. You ain't headed to the hot seat yet. We're gonna be exporting ourselves once we get that dough. We're just lucky the big cheese didn't restrict our ability to export all this data before it was too late. It's a mistake our company won't be making anytime soon. Be careful, Pete. They'll be sending their gorillas any minute. They're twice as big and half as pretty. This ain't my first hoodwink. Those palookas are slower than a sloth of a flat wheel. Oh no, it's the Johns. Let's take it on the heel and toe we're pinched. Oh, it's the doorbell. Come on in, please. Mail, mail, oh, mail Gordon. Gordon, how you doing? How you doing, Pete? Thanks Good for to see you. Uh, what happened to the uniform? Uh, I got robbed. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, I know. That's life. Yeah, mm -hmm. say lovey. Uh, yeah, I got some mail. Uh, oh, good. Let me uh, help you out here. Uh, uh, let's... What else do I got? Uh, nope, nope. Uh, ah, ah, here. Yes, here we go. Oh, good. There's your mail. Thanks, Mail Man Gordon. <laughs> good to see you. Bye. Have mail Man one. Gordon. Let's see what he brought us. All more viewer questions, great. Question one comes to us from Custom King 32 Custom King 32 asks, if we've added custom fields to an entity, can we import values into CRM onto those fields? Well, the answer is yes. And once you've added a field into your CRM, it will show up either when you do use the import wizard, so you can be able to map it to those fields, or if you create a data import template, when you export out the template, it will be an option to use that field. And if you do it that way, the selections, if you've created a custom selection field, all your selections will also show up in that spreadsheet. So it'll make things easy for you, okay? Question two. I did a data import, but I brought in thousands of imports incorrectly. I accidentally put the wrong values into some of the columns. Is there any way to fix this? Yeah, of course, and this happens a lot, so don't feel bad. Um, the first thing you can do is, well, there's a couple ways to fix this. The, one of the first easiest ways to do is just go into that import and just reverse it all, just get rid of all those things. But if you have a lot of records that went in and you don't want to do that, what you can do is, it's kind of a trick, but what you can do is export that data to a spreadsheet, clean it up, and then bring it right back in. So that's another way of doing it, okay? Question three, does CRM allow me to import notes? This is from Note Takers Anonymous, so note takers must take a lot of notes. And yes, the answer is yes. Under the import templates, when you go to build an import template, there are a few different options, and you can select import notes as one of those options. Uh, so just choose that, download the template, populate it, bring it right back in. Uh, and if there's other data that you need to import, like if you're wondering about, you know, can I bring in this or that, take a look at that import wizard or creating those templates and they should be able to walk you through that. And if you have questions, you can always contact us and we're glad to help. Let's see, question four comes from desperately seeking data. I need to export data from specific account users and account executives. I don't see views that explicitly list the data or who they are owned by, and I don't want to export all the data on the system. This is another thing that happens a lot, and so what I would recommend that you do is go to the advanced find, choose the columns and only those columns that you want in that advanced find, and then you can set your criteria. The criteria essentially acts as a filter, and in that filter you can say, I want this user or that user, or you could say, uh, by a number of different data factors. So then once you have that, you can save that template, that advanced find, and then you'll be able to reuse it anytime you want. Question five, another common one. I'm worried that people will walk out the door with our CRM data using the export ability. I don't want my sales rep to, to walk out with the customers or the opportunities that they're working on. This is from Data Embargo. So Data Embargo, this is another very common thing. And one of the challenges with CRM is CRM gives a powerful tool for your people to track and manage all that information. You want them to use that to its maximum potential. So you do want to allow certain functions and certain abilities. So what I'm gonna to suggest to you is an all or nothing thing, so you gotta be aware of that. So you can go into your, the employee's rights and you can restrict their ability to export to Excel. But again, it is all or nothing. And we actually have a few lunch and learn programs about 
uh, marketing and lists and security. So I'd recommend that you go to www.quantacrm.com forward slash events and you can do a search for Marketing 101 Lunch and Learn or our Security Lunch and Learn. And there's a lot more information there. And if you have questions, of course, please give us a call. We're glad to help. Okay, well, that's it for the mailbag today. Thanks, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Miriam Florio. Thanks for joining me today for the CRM Spotlight, where we'll be focusing on importing and exporting data. So before we begin our import, let's actually just take a look at the import spreadsheet that we'll be using. So what I have here is the accounts for import spreadsheet that I created. So I've got all my fields here. Now, when you're importing into dynamic CRM, you can import it with an XML file. I find that CSV seems to be the easiest format to save in and then import back into dynamic. So I've actually saved this off as a CSV. Now, if we go back to CRM, we can import the file by going to settings, and data management. Now this is one way to import. You can of course go to, let's say the sales and accounts list view and import right into there. So we'll look at that in a minute, but we can also go directly to the imports. In order to import data, you must have the rights to import data, of course. And then that brings us to this import area. So what I can do is actually start the import wizard by clicking on import data and then either browsing for my file or dragging and dropping my file on here. And you can see the supported file types that are listed, XML spreadsheet, CSV, TXT, XLSX, and zip. So just to make sure that I don't have any hidden formulas or columns or anything, I like to save a CSV, I think it makes it easier. Of course, you can try and upload in any format that you want that's supported. So I'm gonna select my CSV file and then move on to the next step. Okay, one file uploaded, the file name is there, and of course, if you wanna change delimiter settings, you can change those, I don't need to. I'll click next. Now this step is pretty important. So system data maps, there's a default data map that does automatic mapping. There's four generic contact and account data, and then the sample data map. If you're importing records that are going to be, let's say new accounts into the system along with new contacts on those accounts that you're not really matching to existing records, then I always suggest choosing this for generic contact and account data. Unless you've saved a previous data map from another successful import, you can always select that data map. We'll have that option at the end um, when we're done with this uh, mapping and are ready to import. That we could save a name for this and then reuse it in the future. And that's helpful if you're going to be importing data for let's say a number of your sales team or you know, you're starting off with a new system. Once you get the formula down, if you will, then you want to save that and reuse it so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to import data back in. So I'm going to choose the four generic contact and account data and click next. And then you can see here I have two record types. So I've got the account entity and I also have the contact entity because I chose that option. If you're importing purely account data or purely contact data, you could use the default mappings, choose the entity and just go from there. A lot of times though, it's a combination. So we've got accounts along with the contact on the account as records um, on the same row. And so that's why it shows this option. You can see account here and the required fields are listed above and you can see account name is listed as the Dynamics 365 field. The fields listed on the left column are those for my spreadsheet. So I'm going to choose count as I've named it on the spreadsheet or as it was named. And then I have optional fields that I can map. So I can choose to map the fields from my spreadsheet to either or both the account and the contact entity. So I happen to have a city, the contact email, first name, you can see that those here. So I'll just choose the ones that I do wanna map quickly. And we'll just do the keynotes. Last name is on the contact level, we'll do the main phone number, primary contact, I'll come back to this in a second and let's choose the state. Now if I go to the contact entity, you can see the required field I already have mapped here is last name. The account not mapped, 
I'm actually going to go down and this one's a little bit tricky. It's actually not listed as account name as you might expect it to be listed. It's actually listed as company name. So this can be confusing when you're setting up your data imports. Just remember the way that Microsoft has named it is actually called company name in this step for whatever reason. So when I choose that, it's actually saying what related record type are we talking about here? And I'll choose account. And then if we want, so if related to the contact and at the account level, I can select the fields that I want to map. And so I'll choose the email. And of course the first name is already mapped here. I can use the main phone number. as the business phone. And if you could map the state or the address information if that's important to you at that contact level. Now, if we go back to the account and just look at that primary contact again. You'll get that option that pops up just like it did on the contact side saying, what's the related record type? What are we talking about here? And this just ties these two together. So I'm importing the records. Essentially what this is going to do is perform two data imports. It's going to import the accounts and it's going to import contacts for me. And that's exactly what I want it to do. And there are fields that are not yet mapped, so you can choose to ignore them if you don't want to map those on that particular entity. So I'll just choose to ignore. Account is now done. Let's set the rest of these values and move on to the next step. Okay, great. So I've got two checkboxes on the left and I'll move on to the review mapping summary. Source data files, you can see here, just made a copy of that other, um, the same file that I imported and it's doing, going to perform two imports, the account and the contact. So I'll click on next again. And then you have some options at the end. So allow duplicates, yes or no. Select owner for imported records. So if you're importing records for, let's say a member of your sales team, you can use their name here and set it for the import and then that data map name. So this is where you get a chance to save this data map. Uh, let's say you have future spreadsheets that will look exactly the same that you want to import into Dynamics. Be sure to give that data map a name and that way you can reuse those mappings and not have to go through the steps that we just went through on um, subsequent imports. So we'll choose submit so we can submit this for import. And you can see your data has been submitted for import. So we can check the status. You can choose that shortcut to take you to the imports and you can see here the setting uh, the status says submitted. So this will continue to change. We can come back to this. Finish that later. So let's just look at go to accounts, for example. So different list views inside of Dynamics show us, um, you might've seen the option that says import data here. So directly from my active accounts, for example, I can or from other entities, I can import data. So again, as long as I have the rights to import the data, I can do so. You can see I have the option at the top of the screen here to import data. Well, we just went through the import using the import wizard. However, you could also import the data directly from this more front end interface by choosing import data, which will bring us to that same wizard, or you can download the template for import at this point. So you can click download template. And what that does is it actually just downloads the whole entity to, for you. To spreadsheet, if you have option sets inside of that um, entity for any of these values, you'd be able to see those inside of the fields. So you can see here, this is a robust spreadsheet. It has a lot of fields on it. So what you can do is always download these templates for import, distribute them to your team, have them fill in the values and then return it back to you. So that's a great way to perform the imports. If you don't want to do that, however, you can have your own settings or standard for the way for that you're going to be importing the files like I just showed you um, using the import wizard, which I often find it is a lot easier. It's less bulky than these download templates. However, if there's a lot of information, um, that you want your team to enter and you want to bring back in, you want to make sure they have the option set values correctly set, then I would suggest using that download um, for import template, sending that out to your team, having them fill it in, and then bring in the values like that. So I'll just close this for now. 
Let's do a quick refresh to see if those new accounts got imported yet. And they may not have, but... Oh, here they are, so great. So from my spreadsheet, you can see ABC Skiing Jams has been imported. You can also see ICU.com, Funky Fly and Fresh Productions is in here. So Mac and Cheese Bros have all gotten imported. And so if we click on one of these records, we'll just take a quick look. And you can see the values are filled in here. I also have a primary contact set, so it imported Suzy Gouda as well as the account level. So the account and the contacts have become imported into the system, so that's great. Let's go back to accounts. And from the same list view, I can always choose to export data. Again, this is a right, so you can either revoke this right or you can allow the users to export the data. And you'll have this export to Excel option at the top of the screen here. And there are some several different options, open and Excel online, static worksheet. And then you have a dynamic worksheet and dynamic pivot tables. Different options there. Remember, if you want to export the data and then scrub it, you can always re-import it back in and update your record. So if there's ever a large modification of data, you don't need to go record by record. If you can do so in a spreadsheet a lot faster or easier, that's a great way to accomplish it. Another way to export the data is, of course, to use the advanced find. So we can control the columns that get exported using advanced find, and we'll just take a quick look at that if you're not familiar. So on my advanced find, I can choose what I'm looking for. Let's say accounts in this case, I can edit the columns. So I can choose the columns that I wanna see. Think about this as your spreadsheet. So I can add columns. These columns currently exist. I can add columns by clicking add columns and then select the columns that I wanna add. To the end here, so I'll just click okay. And then of course you can run the results on one of these. So I have look for accounts using the save view of my active accounts, or you can create a new view at this point and click on results for results. So now that I have my list, I can export these records out of the system um, and perform any actions I want on them or just look through those records. I can also perform other actions directly from this view. Thanks for joining me for the CRM Spotlight. We hope that you join us next time. Thanks for watching Channel Q, the CRM Review. I'm Peter Wolf. And I'm Miriam Florio. And I'm Gordon. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you join us next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Are you going to dance with Gordon? <laughs> oh, I'm not. <laughs> no one wants to see you dance.